Ever struggle for the right thing to say at a party? Want something to break the ice? Get the free Freedom Fiends Android app, Pocket Alibi. Pocket Alibi will help you have things to say. It'll replace verbal communication when you're not speaking with somebody. I value your input. It'll make you the hit of any party. Not the my circus, not the my monkeys. Will it work? Not a guarantee. It's a great icebreaker, too. Comes loaded with hundreds of original funny sayings with great voices and great recording quality. It's arranged into seven categories. Disclaimers. You should never do the thing I'm talking about. Excuses. I'm sorry, sir. An older girl told me to do it. Advice. Fun. Fun, too. Get off me, kitty. Libertarian pickup lines. Hey, baby. Hold my camera while I yell at this meter maid. State speech is hate speech. Bark. Bark for the state. Get Pocket Alibi today on Google Play for free. Again, search for Pocket Alibi. That's Pocket Alibi. A-L-I-B-I. Pocket Alibi. Pocket Alibi. Pocket Alibi. Pocket Alibi. Pocket Alibi. Does this app make me look fat? Well, no, all of them. All of the facial animate. You, like, you look at the eyes, and it's like they're staring at you. <laughs> like, creeper stare. Like, like he, they like they just whipped out their dick, and they're, like, s- slow stroking it in front of you as they're staring at <laughs> you in the eye. Like, it's fucking <laughs> creepy. Talk about, like, the uncanny valley to the max. It's, yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 102nd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So this week, we are brought to you again by Phone and again by the Freedom B&B app, which may actually be going through a name change soon. I've been out of the loop, even though I'm supposed to be part of that project. But I will find out more information about that soon. Uh, but our guest from last week, Ben Stone, we had him on talking about the Freedom B&B app. And uh, we are still uh, being sponsored by them because uh, we think it's such a great project and we want to see it get off the ground. Or at least I do. And I'm saying we just because, well, that's what I do around here. Yeah, anyway, I do too. So, we all do. Yes. We all do. We're with you, boss. There you go. So we're back. I am Jeremy. I'm joined as always by Dave. And Andre has returned this week. What is up, guys? How you doing? What's going on, man? All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm exhausted, but uh, I'm here anyway. So let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm exhausted with you there as well. Yeah, we're I all had, in pretty sorry shape <laughs> yeah. for the, today's show. I had a uh, I, I had a long week. I had uh, I had uh, my fr- uh, or, well, I think I think I think both of you know her. Melissa Rakovich was in town for the past week, and uh, we were hanging out, and we did a sh- her and I recorded a show last night, which I think we're, I'm going to put out on our Patreon page at some point once I finish cleaning it up a little bit. Although it's going to be pretty raw, and I was going to put it out as a bonus. Yeah. I was going to put it out as a bonus episode in the RSS feed, but then I started bashing a lot of people, and I'm like, maybe I should put this behind a paywall. So <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it's I'm mostly friends. Right it's, it, it's, oh yeah, oh yeah. I picked on you. Um, I, I railed Danilo really hard. Um, I just once I started going, I couldn't stop. So we were a little high at the time. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that was fun. And well, then yeah, I ended up happen. filling in on the fiends last night because poor Lou was originally left all alone. So I said, sure, I'll do it. Not really thinking that I wasn't going to sleep much beforehand, and then I was going to do a recording with her, and then I had to get her to the airport at six o'clock this morning. So <laughs> it's been a long day, but yeah, I yeah. feel you, boss. I do. I, I I suffer for our craft, so here I am. But we well, were... at least you at least you suffer for our craft. The only thing I suffer from is getting involved in video games. <laughs> Ever since Mass Effect Andromeda has come out, it's been like four five six in the morning on one occasion and then i've had to wake up like an hour <sighs> and a half later i, I, I heard that game was to school. horrible it's i heard it was i've never played any a, of those a, so. a regression from the last mass effect and uh, like it's I, like, one of the biggest flops ever and people are demanding refunds. no like, no no it's not quite that bad it's not like no man's sky no man's sky was immeasurably worse given how much hype was pushed on it because really, a lot of the hype for Mass Effect Andromeda came from the fact that the previous three games, set in the same universe, were awesome. It didn't really have so much to do with they were just pumping it up, pumping it up, pumping it up. Like the series had fans, and it had a huge fan base, and all of those people were waiting and eager. 
So it was it wasn't quite as bad as No Man's Sky, but yeah, there's definitely some some quality issues there that make it incredibly hard to play the game. Like eventually you start to ignore them, but uh, one of the big ones that uh, came out of it, and one of the ones that bothers me, just the absolute worst, is the facial animations. I have never run into so many sociopath looking people, you know, in in any medium ever. And like yeah, yeah, okay, all the politicians in DC are sociopaths, but at least you can't quite tell by looking at their eye expressions because they look like normal human beings. No, these people like the main character. <laughs> well, no, all of them, all of the facial animation. You, like you look at the eyes, and it's like they're staring at you, like <laughs> creeper stare. Like like he they like they just whipped out their dick and they're like slow stroking it in front of you as they're staring you <laughs> in the eye. Like it's fucking <laughs> creepy. Talk about like the uncanny valley to the max. It's yeah. Uh, See, I've never, wow. I've never played any of the Mass Effect games. Well, that's funny. We actually the, were talking about the show I recorded last night. We were talking about video games, and I was talking about my lineage, which was is very limited, actually. <laughs> um, I just, I just start, but I understand what you're talking about, Andre, about getting wrapped up in this stuff. And I mean, that's what I was, I was talking about last night. I think I've talked about it on the show before when uh, I stumbled across a, a, a deal on Final Fantasy VII <laughs> last year. Which I hadn't played since you know it came out in 1997. Uh, I was all sorts of ecstatic and was immediately transported, you know, 19, 20 years back when I had spent over 300 hours and almost dropped out of school. Uh, well, almost failed out of school because I kept not showing up for class when I had three hour breaks <laughs> oh, and I would yeah, I would course. go home and not make it back for the second set of classes because I was so engrossed in that goddamn game, um, which to I, me is I still know, right? is, is still the greatest game of all one. time as far as I'm concerned. But well, we'd have to have a hefty debate about that. But it's a good. Well, it's, a, it's a subjective no, thing it's, it's to me. To far. me, it's the subjective most. It's it's the most. It's the best game ever. Because we're talking about Final Fantasy original Final Fantasy seven seven. The, 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 it was um, on the PS one. Yeah, it's, it's, original easily, PlayStation. it's easily in the top three, if not the number one. It slot revolutionized. Of how much it did it's what tough it did. to beat Goldeneye. It really never played it. <laughs> no, yeah, but you got to consider the 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 material. And then the you first Mario the the game. Like so like Final Fantasy's top 10 for sure, but I I mean, I know this is an anarchy podcast. <laughs> That's fine. We've talked. We've talked games. Know if it's we've, top we've, three, Andre. We've talked Come games. Oh, well, it's again, definitely this is a, this is a completely subjective list, Dave. I'm saying well, to me, is, yeah, you're subjective. Right. It is subjective, but some subjective valuations are not correct. So, you know, so, we have to true. address those. What, <laughs> what isn't subjective, though, is that the it is fact now. I mean, Castro's son has, or not Castro's son, Escobar's son has came out and said that the that his dad worked for the CIA. So that means all the coke coming out of Colombia was basically either signed off by the CIA or ran specifically for the CIA. That, that means uh, that all of that the whole drug war is just a farce to make the CIA money. We know that the U.S. military and the CIA have been doing stuff in Afghanistan for years and that there's a heroin epidemic all of a sudden. Uh, who knows? But here we have Ron Paul saying, we know that the CIA raises money in the drug industry when they want to run secret wars. So we they're doing it. Like This is a senator telling you this, or a house member telling you this. Uh, Former house member. Former House former tell you they, they know things. Thug. They know how government works. They know who they can't say things about. They they see behind the curtain every so often and be impossible for them not to. Well, yeah, so, especially if you're in for as long as he was. How, how many people do you think care? Because what you're talking about, I think a lot of people care. They just have no idea what to do. Well, no, but you're talking about like Escobar and stuff. Like that was back in what the 70s and 80s, right? Was that when all that went down with him? Yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah, think sure. I, 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 I don't remember. But I mean, it would, no, but I'm saying it would lead that they're still doing it. But but and no, they're but still that's running not, all the that's cartels not my, in Mexico. And that's not my point, though. I'm, you're talking about now you're going back over 30, you know, you're going back 30, 40 years, maybe. That is the timeline that the government itself always seems to have for releasing classified yeah. documents. <laughs> uh, because once that, mu that much time has passed, most people will either ignore it or kind of look at it as, 
well, that was then, not now. Or, well, yeah, we kind of knew that. Big deal. Like, what, you know, there's nothing that could be done about it. Oh, yeah. Now. That Reagan, he was an asshole, you know. Well, right? don't yeah, even get, I, I get what you're saying. Don't even get me started on old Ronnie. But, uh, the, yeah, but so, I mean, to us, I mean, when you started saying this, I'm like, is, is this news? Like, we know this, right? <laughs> no, a lot, by and by far and large, still, people still think a lot of what I know I say is conspiracy, but there's, more evidence pointing towards what I'm saying being true, all except for the time traveling Trump thing, which you know more and more people are talking about. I <laughs> think somebody on Fox News said something about it about the time traveling Trump. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know these these conspiracies uh, about the CIA. You know, I, I go deeper. The CIA is definitely a front for quote unquote the the Rothschilds and the the, the international bankers for sure. It would only make sense. You know that the Fed is printing them huge amounts of black budget money. I mean, there's reports coming out that the Pentagon lost ten trillion dollars. Just doesn't know where it is. There's no clue. Oh yeah. Well, that's 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 par for the course. That's happened how many times since? Because what was it? It was six trillion before nine eleven, or was it six billion? Whatever it was, the day the day before <laughs> on nine ten. Who knows, Jeremy? It's all well, no, r- no. Rumsfeld me. Rumsfeld made an announcement on not on September tenth, two thousand and one that that it. The Pentagon had just lost. Next like, day, <laughs> I think it was multiple trillions. It might have been billions at that point. I don't remember, but whatever it was, it was and the lot. next and the next day, nine eleven happened, and nobody was talking I think about it was that. Anymore. Seven billion. Yeah, nobody was talking about that anymore. So you yeah, know, and got, the the same the the records department is where that Scud missile or whatever the hell not that not plane hit the Pentagon. <laughs> it was the same department. I love I love you start talking about yeah all these conspiracies. Then you're just like straight up like not a plane. <laughs> Fact of the Dude, matter. The video that's just got not released. It's not a plane. There's no way. There's no way. It's not a plane. That okay. The Pentagon one has always been the most difficult one for me to swallow because it just it does. There's just so much wrong with that. Uh, obviously it never looked like a plane and the fact I mean, that if it's a fucking plane release the chevrons or whatever's across the streets camera that caught the whole thing that the cia or whatever confiscated like immediately and strapped a whatever you can't tell on the manager of the store immediately i mean come on like there's too much bs behind the whole thing nonsense dave nonsense <laughs> It's for national security purposes. You cannot possibly view this footage because it will compromise. National this would security. harm our. This would harm our 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 public relations campaign. It would actually it would it would actually happening. cause bald eagles to melt and fall out of the sky. So you just can't you, you can't look at it. That's like that's how that's how serious this is, right? That's what they tell us. That's right. It's for national that's security. Right. They'll just they'll fall out of the sky. The eagles. It'll be it'll be. And over. you don't want to kill the bald eagles do exactly. You, Dave? Do you, Dave? So why do you hate bald eagles? Well, <laughs> why do you hate space the, travel, Dave? <laughs> that's uh. no, that's socialist that hates space travel, not me. <laughs> uh. Well, so, so the so what do you think? What do you what 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 could what 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 could the the common guy do? The the little peon in the world do against the, the monolith of the CIA? Like what, what? 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 There's almost nothing you can do other than make other people aware well, you to can't, a crisis point. You can't do anything. Well, I can't, I'm not going to say you can't, but for the most part, you really can't do much. A, a, a single individual, like you're referring to, can't do anything against the organization known as the CIA. I mean, they're professional killers. Uh, I That's don't not think, true. I Donald don't think Trump, you, Trump I, was sent by God to save us from the CIA. Uh, sorry. Don't think you really want to mess with them. However, to me, they the only way to handle the CIA is the only way to handle any other government agency or government in general and try to get people to just stop participating in it because they'll, you know, if there's less people backing the system itself, then the black that black budget becomes less of an issue because if if you know less people are are considering the the dollar to be worth anything you know and hastening the collapse of it well then they run out of a little bit of their power too because they don't have anything they don't have like an unlimited budget anymore they can't do all this crazy shit no yeah you're right but so to me it's not a matter of going up against any one particular agency whether it be the cia or whoever else it's just a matter of trying to help convince people that they don't need any of this bullshit because 
it is all bullshit because, well, look, look at the CIA, <laughs> look at the history. I mean, yeah, you want to talk conspiracy or not. I mean, I think a lot of people still just assume this is all uh, a big, uh, you know, just a bullshit tinfoil hat stuff because up until like now Ron Paul saying stuff like this, who's been one of the most vocal uh, speakers about this whole thing? That crazy motherfucker, Rick Ross. <laughs> he was the one out there <laughs> yeah, screaming that, about that, it. That, that, Everybody that. thinks he's fucking insane. So, oh, he's just nuts. Of course, he just, you know, he, he's just making shit up. And that's where people get these ideas from. So it's not true. It can't possibly, you know, those diehard patriots that believe rah, 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 America, you know, Mer, Mer, America, America first. America's never wrong. No, I watched wrong. the thing exactly what you're talking about. The the, the biggest uh, crack dealer in, in basically the world all of his cocaine that he was using to make the crack with, because that's the you know the main ingredient, um, was coming from the CIA in Colombia. Uh, that is the claim he made, and I, I don't doubt the man. to Rick Ross, <laughs> <laughs> and he only learned about it while he was in prison. Yeah, and I have uh, you know based on I mean again it may because just, of a Gary Webb was, was it, it yeah it was Gary Webb I believe yeah uh, and I don't yeah, think Gary Webb uh, yep. And I don't. Uh, Jeremy Renner's in a movie uh, about Gary Webb. Yeah, Killing the Messenger. I've heard yeah. that. Killing the Messenger. I haven't, sorry. I haven't seen it yet. Heard it. Heard about yeah, it. Yeah, I need to watch it. I do. I'm like just not Jeremy big on Renner. movies anymore. I'm not really either. Although I have been watching more. I've gotten I like to into make it. my own memes. Now that I have, I don't know. Yeah, but now speaking now, speaking of movies that I'm big on. Oh yeah. Ghost in the Shell comes out tonight, and that's where I'm going to see after I get done here. Really. I'm a yes. big. I was a big fan of Ghost in the Shell and you know basically all the other offshoots, the animes and, and stuff that came out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be a fan of the movie. Not sure. I think they've twisted a bunch of stuff. But uh, well, anything, I will. I will give you my opinion without giving you any spoilers. I will give you my opinion on the. You have my quality. telegram. Well, I'm not a. I'm not one of those guys. You can spoil the shit out of everything. I'm not one of those guys. N no, no, no. I, I mean, like, you, it, I'll tell you whether or not it follows the line because. The I for those of you that aren't familiar, because I'm sure many of you aren't, uh, Ghost not. in the Shell was a manga series that was written by Masa, uh, Shiro Masamune in the mm -hmm. late '80s, which was turned into a full-length feature film anime in 1992. That I remember. A series, yes, called I mean, Ghost the, in the Shell, standalone uh, complex. Stand, and yeah, then there was standalone complex. complex Act Two, and then a couple others. Um, yeah. Oh, such but a good movie. the the anime when it came out in '92 was groundbreaking. I think it was one yeah. of the first mainstream anime films to get any traction at all in the United States, and it was it became a cult classic in the United States amongst you know us non Japanese folks. I I never got into it, but it, it was the first time I had heard of anime. I remember that I was yeah, I was, exactly. I was about fi was, I was, was fifteen for a lot of people. I was yeah I was, I was about fifty yeah, I was fifteen in ninety two, and I remember I remember I remember that coming out, and I remember friends of mine being into it, and I just didn't have any interest in it. But I do like like you said, like it, it even got to me who didn't know anything about it. Like I like I remember that <laughs> name. Like it definitely did have an impact. So yeah. I watched it all later on. Like I didn't catch it when it was basically, you know, live or what. Well, because you're a youngin, Dave. Were you even born when it was? Out? I'm talking about the 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 the, 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 the series that came out. But oh. as soon as you know, as soon as the show got announced, and then it was announced that Scarlett Johansson, I was like, wow, that's the most. Like, if I had to pick a, a major right now, it would be Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> like before even thinking about it. Um, yeah, actually, that that know. was the thought I had in my head too. And despite all the nonsense about whitewashing which anybody who's familiar with the uh the manga or uh, the anime and is familiar with the story at all would know that this isn't even an issue but hey yeah <laughs> you know like, oh, let's well, get our jimmy's rustled up you know the cia is bombing like brown people daily to keep their drug monopolies intact but let's worry about well, we can't, we can't whitewashing white playing a role we can't have we can't. a white girl playing a role in a, a japanese a, a Japanese content movie, no sir. No, it's, no, no. it's entertainment um, appropriation, man. It's cult oh you know, yes, it's oh, taking it's, cultural it's appropriation it's to a whole so, new level. So, what was the fucking whiz then? Next question. Well, exactly. No, oh, <laughs> but that's okay because just like just like black people can't be racist against white people, black people can do stuff over again, and it can be perfectly fine. I don't believe that shit anymore. I'm done with it. 
No, you're wrong, Ghost, David. Ghostbusters, you're right. the, the Ghostbusters you're remake boy. wasn't wrong because it I'm, was well, women. Number one, I've never believed that. But Even though it's I, horrible. when you're born in the South, everyone's racist down here to some extent. And, um, yeah, it's just. Aren't you the one who's always saying that? Race. No- I, get, I get sick of hearing about race. It's like I'm tired of it. Like, who the hell cares? I feel like Peter, when he's like, oh, okay, and then snaps his neck. Every time someone wants to talk about uh, race, man, I'm sick of it. And this whitewashing thing is another thing. It's like uh, replace the white with anything else and see how it sounds. And it, it, if if you're at that point where you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this sounds a little loony, you should probably stop saying stuff like that. Actually, you know, and I totally had that thought. Like, w- what if they had they had uh, cast a black actress to play the major? The movie would have got so, shit on. I know, and so many people would have well, just depending, like, gone, like depending. lost was, their minds. No, no, I mean, there's, it, there's it doesn't even matter. Spot. No, it doesn't even matter. I recant my instead, but it would still it would de- it would depend on how it was marketed. But you're you're right, it would be rough. Because the the way the movie is looking, and I know this because I've watched the anime. I don't know how many fucking times, but well, they, there are shots <laughs> that are like direct pulls from the anime made into live action. So clearly, mm-hmm. they're wanting to stay true to the source material. Yeah. This isn't like some sort of oh, you know. It took inspiration from or inspired by. No, this is like this is Ghost in the Shell. This is Masamune Shiro's master work, and well, there are very the specific parameters. Huh? About uh about Death Note about uh them casting a black person or a, a guy as a K or whatever, and Actually, not casting. No, I haven't heard anything uh, about that really. Yeah, and not casting K as Japanese or whatever as well. And it's like it goes both ways. It's like. <laughs> It never it, ends. It, it never is. Politics, it's like, it why ends. can't anyone just shut up and enjoy art? I don't get it. Why do no, your politics have to racist. shift it? That's because why I've never liked Rage Against the Machine, and I don't care who comes after me for that one, because they're, they wear their politics on a sleeve. Now, well, on this a, show, Zach's a douche. this is a political show, but if I had a music, still like their uh, music. venture, I probably wouldn't be you know, doing whatever he's doing, being all commie and shit. Well, listen, man. He's got a platform. He's using it for what he wants. They've been pretty successful for a very long time. He's a a proper communist. He's using it to make money. I get it. (laughs) Yeah. But people... Private property and IP laws, man. But that's, you know, that that's part of the whole... (laughs) Rage against the machine! Collectivist problem where everybody just... You know, individuality is, is is a personal affront to these people. So they have to tear everybody else down and nobody, you can't steal anything from anybody. And, you know, because these people are this and these people are that, and this belongs to these people and everything is in groups and groups and groups. And it's nothing about the individual and fuck art, man. It's not about fucking art anymore. It's about, it's everything is about feelings. Everything's about making sure everybody feels good and everybody feels good all at the same time, except the horrible people that they hate, which could be anybody at any time. Usually us, you know, the, the cis white males, we're the, we're the easiest right. fucking target. Um, we, you know, fucking we, we, bat, you know, we, we probably, we probably rank highest. I mean, the rich, the 1%, whatever, but we get mixed in with what them we, too. What do so. we talk about universalizing your, your arguments? And kind of like I was saying earlier about this, you know, the cis white male will replace cis and white and male with pretty much anything else that's, you know, along the same categories and see if your argument or whatever stands up because only individuals act and all this collectivist bullshit is ruining art it really is it's making comedians unfunny because if they say the wrong thing they piss off the wrong people and then they boycott all of the places that they've got signed and so the the people have to unbook the comedians and then they're ruined because they made an offhand joke yeah the world is really weird now i don't like it it's yeah i don't like it either but not only that it's this whole like the like what we're talking about with the whitewashing it's this idea that ideas it's the notion that ideas can belong to a group of people. Like, I, I don't think I've talked about... Have we talked about IP or while I was on the show? I'm sure it's brought, been brought up. I don't know how it's many been, times. We been have talked about like it, but I don't think so. Paul Gordon yeah. dead horse for sure. Right. No. But it's, it's, <laughs> nobody beats, it's nobody beats a dead horse like Paul Gordon. That can, that, I'm sorry. I just have to point that out. That's, that's incorrect, Dave. Nobody beats a, a horse like Paul Gordon. That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> he is the horse beater extraordinaire. Sorry, continue, Andre. No, but that's, <laughs> no, but it's it's that same sort of idea. Like it, it's this notion that you can own p- 
patterns of of information that anybody can have. But no, you if if you're not part of the right group, then you can't ever use or have access to those patterns of information. You can't have those thoughts. I've I've How found dare out you have the, those thoughts. I found it's, it it's out on Radio. I read what? I read an article the other day that the government literally has a the, the U.S. Army ha, our military rather has a program to where when you file a patent and they go through and look through it if if they deem it national security they then confiscate your pal, uh, patent and like lock it up and don't compensate you or anything and say don't say anything to anyone about this is this really they, I mean I'm yeah not and surprised, they've done that but... to thousands of people that have made um uh perpetual motion machines that make where do you think our flying cars are do you know exactly. what? This is spectacular. Because if I ever, if I hear another son of a bitch say, "Oh well, you know, may, maybe war is bad," but look at all the great stuff that came from military re research and development. If I hear that line one more fucking time, yeah, they just snag I'm up because they're commies. Kill man. somebody! I am going. They're to communists. Well, they the, steal the the state is going to steal every idea so they can implement it first that they possibly can. Well, they, they so when you file like when you file for this patent, you have to essentially lay all of your stuff out on this online for daddy to inspect it and then approve your patent. So like it's a joke, the whole thing. And it is used for them to confiscate what they need. They they cherry pick the good stuff that they need. Well, I'm sure in their uh, eyes. That I've I've heard stories about that before. I've never really confirmed it, but I mean, if you want to say that's definitely true, Dave. Okay, fine. Um, I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, but I, I think that yeah, sure. There's definitely things that if if that is definitely true, then I'm sure there's plenty of things that they've taken like that. But I think the other other stuff they actually have. You know, somebody in that organization at some time has come up with things on their own there, but they're always really destructive things. They're always things that will hurt a lot of people. Uh, someone invented this way to clean water really good. How can we figure out how to kill as many people with it, Johnson? Well, yeah, yeah. B b basically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Weapon, weaponi weaponizing that that is what that that is probably a more likely scenario that they take the ideas of other people and just figure out ways to weaponize them. <laughs> yes, there's literally video right. of the That's... Pentagon interviewing these people or this guy, this military contractor interviewing all these generals at the Pentagon saying that he can chemtrail vaccines that turn people gay. So trust me, they're doing the frogs crazy shit. Gay. <laughs> and shut off sensor and shut off sensors of their brain that makes them turn on to religion, stuff like that. It's because of the extra fluoride. Well, there is. I mean, the, that may all be hearsay, but well, I mean, that's well, what no, I'm no. There's. I think that was. I think that was actually something else that was declassified. The the fact that uh, they the U.S. government and the U.S. military used or maybe it was the cia the gay bomb no they not the gate but they used it on the people in france that then they dose them with an entire town with lsd i believe yeah yeah they've done uh, that, that's shows, documented yeah. you know like this stuff they have done before <laughs> so again it's not out of the realm of possibility the only problem i ever have with it is some of these things no longer seem outlandish because of what we've come across before but they could very well be, I'm not saying that they, this one in particular is, or any of them are, but they all could be false flags because that's just how governments, society, you know, secret societies, whatever, you know, positions of power, that's how they operate. They, they work on fear and then they build on, they build on these things and, and, and just perpetuate this crap. So people don't, so people stay off guard all the time and don't really actually try to figure out what's wrong. But they do all this nasty what? crap, <laughs> and people just go, well, "Oh, yeah!" Like everyone's debating the migrant thing right now, Jeremy, and the, you know the borders, and then who can come over here, who should leave, and all this. And the real question is, is why are these people needing to migrate? Oh, it's because the CIA is bombing the absolute fucking horseshit out of them. Oh, maybe we should stop that, and then all those people will probably go back, and the issue won't even be there. But no, let's keep everyone divided on these people belong here and these people belong here versus these people's homeland is getting destroyed by a military apparatus that you're forced to pay for. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe that's the issue.
Well, no, Dave, that can't be the issue because, you know, it's 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 not the problem. You just want to blame the U.S., Dave. It, Islam's been a problem forever. They're the problem. It's the problem. You know, like that's those look, motherfuckers. You, you could bomb America, that, you can, they could you can not bro- Somalia. OK, they could not bomb their next door. Their neck, the next Providence or whatever over most of these these people over there. Well, yes, okay? but they this couldn't. is but, well, of, of course. But you're talking about people who, who who come from the same mentality, who thought, who honestly thought that Hitler was going to take over the world, even though he had already spread himself too thin, not even getting out of his own backyard, essentially, <laughs> yeah. because he tried to take on two different fronts at the same time he had nowhere near the capability of getting across the the uh, getting across the atlantic yeah, he to the even u.s england like yeah, he yeah exactly he couldn't conquer that england. little street that whatever the, the canal island. you can't well there's no i don't i think i've read many generals or or, or some some military books before that have said you it's impossible to win a three-front war and that's what hitler stupidly when he went into russia put himself into and lost like he could have held his ground forever if he would have just kept going at England and not messed with Russia, but I, for some reason he went to Poland and well, or went past Poland the the, the line and and <laughs> lost it at Stalingrad. I mean everyone knows the story, but he was so in debt that even if they would have won Russia, he had printed his currency so crazy because that entire entire Nazi regime was uh, set up to fail to be a protagonist to bring upon a one world government or one world european state or one european state like and the eu did come up out of that and the league of nations and all that yeah it certainly did it certainly so did. i mean call me a conspiracy theorist but conspiracy that happened theorist. so <laughs> look dave until you have the documents uh, i've i don't have all the documents but it's in my head rattled around but <laughs> the, the the thing is is I think more and more people are, especially with all of this stuff that's WikiLeaks is keeps putting out about the CIA and about the secret goings on about our government. I think more and more like just normal average tax paying nine to five, you know, really don't have time to look, bring their head up to look at and consider these things is actually now starting to not be able to ignore it and say, I've got stuff to do. Like they have to go like, why don't my kids getting uh, abducted by my own government and sold as sex slaves? Like, that's not what I want happening. So something's got to stop right here. And I think the more and more this veil gets ripped off, the more and more it's going to be our opportunity to go in and, and plant seeds in fertile minds because there's going to be so people, so many people disgusted with how government has operated or the state has operated in especially the last 20 years that that they won't even be able to hide it you know like like you were saying about the generational thing they won't even be able to hide it like so many people will be burned that they'll just be like ugh i mean because when you're finding out that the the lady in charge of the amber alerts was put there by like a clinton associate and she had to get out of haiti because she was uh on trial for child trafficking I, it gets you you start going holy shit there's a problem here and uh normal people can't avoid it when it gets to that point well so. it's it's always ever been a a cultural thing like you have to shift culture before the window's been moved will... hard yeah yeah exactly exactly so it's been yeah. i've never seen the mo- window moved this hard i mean <laughs> there's daily headlines trump's going to end this this government agency trump's going to end that government they're trying to get everyone scared that he's going to cut all this stuff and he might he might he might just say screw it i'm going to bankrupt well, what, this whole what country. i find what i find really funny about that though is like most of the people that are like screaming and like screeching at the top of their lungs more and more people just don't give a shit about them like they, they literally could give a shit less like public opinion for the mainstream media pundits that are out there like screaming at the top of their lungs like oh my god he's literally hitler all that shit, all that support is like it's waning. I mean, yeah, of course, mainstream media is going to have a a stranglehold on people's minds for years, decades, probably. But yeah. it's well, lost its a certain tacit generation support. I, I don't sure. know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's lost its right. tacit support. Like I know for well, a like six like percent my... approval rating or something like that. Seven percent. Uh, I I couldn't imagine it would be higher. But I maybe, think uh, Hitler and uh, our current Congress had a higher 
approval rating than the current corporate owned media because like six media companies or six companies own all basically all the media that you see online and you know people are slowly waking up to their agendas that they have and I, I'm growing ever more fearful for the backlash of people that are racially the same as the people that are perpetrating the same thing or, or at least uh, their creed is the same and there might just be a full scale war again against the Jews <laughs> just say it uh, the, the media is just collapsing right now like and they're going they're not going to let this stranglehold go and if you look it's all owned by the same like six seven families yeah but the, well they're not going to let it go they're not going to they're they're going to go down swinging just like any other good monster will and they're then while there may be like this not not a very high approval rating I don't know that people are necessarily flocking to any other source for news at the present time or getting fed up to the point that, I don't know, that they want to do something. I mean, because usually apathy is it, people come to yeah. quicker than actually than action. They just oh, yeah. people totally, resign totally themselves. Agree. People resign themselves to. Well, this is just the way it is. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's yeah, just, let's, I see let's that most of the time when I tell people stuff that you just see it in their eyes. I go, well, what do you do? Well, yeah, I, I think I've take talked action. To, I think I've talked about that before. It's like I had a conversation with my grandmother last year, the year before. It was her and my uh, and her brother and, and sister, who are like my great aunt and great uncle, and you know they're all in their eighties plus, and we were sitting down and talking, and they're uh, they're all like republican esque i guess they're but they're also mm -hmm. especially my one and is you know huge glenn beck fan um and uh, uh -oh. so but so at the, but willing to talk about a little more than the average you know older person who's glenn just beck stuck fan. in their way well yeah but you know what i mean like like people that uh like a hardcore like uh rush limbaugh yeah. fan who's just been right, like yeah, you know like, you. like that you know somebody that, uh, in that age group who's been somebody like that forever like so a little more flexible a little a little more willing to listen to other ideas but i actually got them to like admit to a bunch of things just walk them through a bunch of stuff and they you kind of saw their eyes go oh like wait a minute but at the end it was well, what are we going to do about it? And <laughs> and quickly followed by, we're too old, so there's no point. In it doing all dawns about on it. Them, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's great, but what about you know, especially with my grandmother? I'm like, yeah, but what about your great grandchildren? You know, my kids. Like, I'm not doing like, yeah, we're it may trying be too to build late, but a I'm, life for our kids better than we had I'm by to make leaving it them with mountains of debt and doing nothing about our tyrannical government. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't get it either. Well, it's still the best system we have. Guys, it's still the best system we have. Ugh. Okay. Because without system. this, it would be chaos. There would be warlords everywhere. People would be dying on the streets. Cell phones would be exploding in your hands. That warlord's got to sleep at some off. time. That's all I'm saying. He has to sleep at some time. I think it was, what was it? Uh, C.S. Lewis was talking about like he would rather live under the, the cruel and capricious rule of a, a warlord tyrant than moral busybodies because at least cruel warlord tyrants eventually just like get bored or tired and stop and give pause for a minute yep yeah they sometimes i mean i think i think, think like did i did i do the right thing i mean this is seems kind of extreme maybe whereas moral busybodies they have the their their consciences are clear because they're they're out there to help us well, yeah, but that brings us <laughs> yeah, that that, right. that that brings us almost full circle to how we started this and talking about how you know people just interfering because that's what they have to do. It's like they it, they have to people who want to you know like the SJWs or whoever it is who just want to scream like about the cultural appropriation that we were talking about earlier or Everyone anything has like to that. Think like me. It's all yeah, but they have to. The, you know, the moral busybodies is an even better way to put it because that's what it is. They have to like that's their identity. They have mm -hmm. to yeah, constantly. They can't, stop. Be, they, they can't stop. If they stop, they die. Yeah, because they they have nothing else. All that matters yeah. is shaping the world in their warped image. Well, I think that what has happened is, is they've get they've gotten all these memes kind of blasted in their head through college or their parents or whatnot, whatnot, and then they've built up this huge victim complex. And anytime they're not getting to be the victim and and blaming someone else about it and 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 shifting all of their failures onto someone else 
through that whole blame game and you know victimization game that they have really nothing else to talk about and nothing else to really tell anyone about and nothing to build on and so as long as they can you know sorry to borrow a line from Stephen Molyneux but as long as they can collect resources that way they're going to do it yeah it's a pathology they it feed it feeds on itself and the more it feeds the more they want it and the more they pursue it and the more they push for it and once they they get into get to a point where but like, there's blowback now there's blowback now full scale well, yeah, I mean, saying, like, which is why they're getting louder and more violent and more rabid and just foaming at the mouth more because they they can see it they can see the point where they're not going to get their fix anymore and they're terrified of it the same way any other drug addict is terrified of it i mean you just even mentioned turning off planned parenthood which i think any anarchist uh, sh should be for uh, turning off state-funded abortions, um, and they lose their absolute shit over it, like because they know, like, and you know, it, well, man, that that goes so deep that Planned Parenthood thing, but free abortions should never happen. That is ridiculous. Taxpayer-funded abortions, like that, that right there should ha should cause so many. I'm not paying my taxes that the state shouldn't exist. I don't but know. That's how. Pussified everyone. I don't know. Is. See, I don't see the whole the free abortions thing. I don't know how that works. I mean, I think I've talked about this before. I don't usually like to talk about it, but I'm pretty sure that I have before. You know, when I was much younger, I made a lot of stupid decisions, and people I was with and I made stupid decisions, and I was party to a couple of abortions, unfortunately. And I went through Planned Parenthood, and I still had to pay, so they weren't free. I had to pay. Well, they ramped up quite a bit, <laughs> especially if you're a I'm using my fingers here, minority, or you're disparaged, or you're in a low income situation. Well, I was, I was, I was, in, I was in the low income situation at the time. Um, well, it might. It, I know that it's a, a lot more radical these days. Maybe I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I said, I just it always, it always, it always sounded weird to me when I heard that because I'm like, I don't know. I and everybody else I knew, no matter which race they were, all had to pay. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't buy the whole the free abortion thing, but it's it's taxpayer subsidies because if I remember subsidies, correctly, yes. the money is the money is paid to Planned Parenthood as a block grant mm -hmm. fund, so it's yes. it's given to Planned Parenthood to use however they want to use it. So yeah. there's no way to know for certain whether any of that money does go to abortions, and more than likely, it does pay for part of those services or to offset the cost of those services to keep them cheap. It's yeah, it's quite possible. And so, there, there but may even be then, you 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 have people being forced to pay for these things that they're not even involved in. It's pure communism. It's it's right, uh, which um, is which is what I was getting to. Like I, I tragedy I of the commons if, for the womb. Yeah, I don't I don't care if I know for certain the fact that it's being funneled towards an organization that I know for a fact um, engages in abortion services. I don't want. I don't want it. I don't want it. I mean, provide. there's I stuff out coming it. out about Planned Parenthood selling the fetuses, like aborting fetuses, a, a certain way to keep them alive long enough to like get them places to to sell and harvest organs and stuff out of them. Like all this stuff's kind of coming out, and like they're probably gonna completely not be a thing in a, a few months or years or less than that. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't quite say that. It's how long has it been around? Them. They're resourceful. <laughs> yeah, they've been around quite a while. I don't know about that, but. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully, if, if all that stuff oh, proves, there's like comes one out party to be, rule now. So, <laughs> well, I, but again, I mean, you you were starting to say how we got into this was you're saying these, you know people freak out when you talk about removing these services, and I, I was just talking about this the other night with Jim Jesus. I, I think to me, I mean, sure, I think there's some people that cling to this stuff and that will become violent to protect it because they you know like andre you were saying they just like they need more and more and more of it but i i think a lot of it is the the average person who gets sucked up in this and is not the extreme version of these people more so just do it because their answer to so many things in life is well it didn't work so let's just do more of it that has to fix the problem because that's the that that is how government down. has taught has taught everybody to live. Right. We just we just have to try again and we have to do more. We have to throw it. more and money at it. It'll work the second time. Keynesianism. Around. We have to do it again. We have to do it harder. We have to vote. You know what? Just do it more times. It'll work. It it just has to work. So it, you're saying most people are insane. 
I I wouldn't go that far. I would. They're, well, they're insanity duped. is doing the same thing. And well, that's not results. really a definition that gets thrown out around a lot. That's not an actual I definition know. of the word. But I but I people are duped. You know, I mean, and I, I I say that as somebody who was duped for a very long time. I think so. most people are like this. If you've ever seen the movie Network, you'll understand where I'm going here. They just want to be left alone. They just want whatever I got to do for you to leave me alone. It's the reason you go get your license. It's the reason you pay for your tag. It's the reason you do any other thing. It's just leave me alone. Whatever I got to do to get you to leave me the hell alone, I'm going to do that. And I think that's most people run that way. And they don't sadly know when bullshit is in their face a lot of times because they're so used to saying, just leave me alone. I got to pay this. Okay, fine. Leave me alone. Done. They, it's like I'd rather sweep it on the rugs than confront it, and that's what's happened well, with all this SJW shit and all. It's finally boiling up, if you're noticing. Well, it, it. and it and it also ties into this the other, the other notion that I have about people, and that's generally they don't have a very well defined moral compass. I mean, yeah, there's some things that are obviously wrong. I mean, it just just about everybody thinks that murder yeah. is wrong and rape is wrong and you know what have you, but more more often than not, most people will just kind of sort of conform to their environment because of social pressures, because they want to go along to get along, because they don't want to deal with ostracism, right? Because, you know, people pursue purposeful action to alleviate, you know, a sense of unease. Like, why would anybody consciously want to pursue greater unease socially to hold a position when it's, you know, infinitely easier and simpler to just kind of go along, go with the flow and not really make waves? Yeah. I, yeah, I would, you're right. and I and I really do think that comes from not you know either not having developed one uh, a clearly defined moral compass to begin with, or simply not wanting to invest the time in it because like you know like I said the co- the opportunity cost of developing a a principled set or a, a a set of principles that they can live by is greater than just going with the flow and having social acceptance. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, breaking from the social norms is uh you know usually social death well but the internet is kind of letting people that would have that social death you know think about a small yes you know, the rejects like us it's letting us yeah. have a yes. voice yes it's letting us connect and go holy shit there's more of us out here and then that is also snowballing and people going you know hey these guys aren't so bad they're just like me or whatever and it's dude well, yeah, Every but- online board I go on is getting overran by people either swaying hard hand cap or wouldn't disagree but, with it. Um, but it's which is which is a positive thing for people like us because that's what we're hoping for. But, but both, it wasn't like this two years ago. But like both, I didn't even see the word. Well, hold on. But both both in both instances because I was going to say this what we were just talking about before you kind of moved into this is that in both of those instances the main reason is is because most people are inherently followers. Yeah, it is yeah, not exactly. in. Mo- I mean, it's, I, I believe that it's in most people somewhere, but it's deep, deep, deep down in most in most people because most people just are inherently followers, and that is why I, I have follower. been trying to preach for years now that violent revolution isn't isn't necessary. Using the political system isn't necessary. It's just a matter of winning the numbers game, and it's not it's not a majority. It's not anywhere even close. All you need is that tireless min- minority working at an almost religious level to shift culture, as we have talked about time and time again. You know, yeah, and yeah, that's exactly and because and and most the the biggest reason for that is because most people are followers and because most people would prefer to go along just to get along so when a new idea comes along and enough people start preaching that idea and working towards that idea and they're not stopped and it becomes and like the benefits of being part of that idea start to become more apparent, then it's quite, it's much easier, you know, to, for other people, for the followers to go, Hey, this looks like a good idea. Now let's go join up with these guys. Yeah. You know, that's why I've, I've that's said, why I'm not totally opposed to like cult of personalities really binding themselves behind libertarianism or whatnot, as long as they stay logically consistent, you know, but that's, I think that's the near, imp- that's near impossible. It's not impossible, but it's near impossible because the, because power 
because what what the what the effect of power yeah. has on people even people with the best intentions who want to be just the leader not a ruler just to help people get there when you become when you become the focal point when you are the cult the cult of personality is around you, you it's very you easy it's just, to succumb no matter to, what you're destined to shill <laughs> well no you just it's it's so much easier to succumb to you know yeah, the dark I, side I essentially and that's what you see it all the time you know when people talk about you know it, whether well, it's, you might get compromised in some way or blackmailed you know, that, no that, that could be the case too but it it seems to happen more often than not that people just end up you, you know you rise too high you burn your damn wings man it's not uh you don't uh, want to what, what was the title what was that episode 98 and kokesh is no frodo yeah well exactly he's a good example of that you know he uh i i, I personally think he got you know i see it happen with a lot of people you get a little too full of yourself because well everybody looks up to you and you know you start saying crazier and crazier things <laughs> um but it ha it happens. I see. It, like I said, not just in in the liberty movement. Anywhere, it happens all the time. That's what happens when you get that rush of power mm -hmm. of, of any kind. It it it's it it you know it's almost human nature just to succumb to it. <laughs> it takes a lot to fight against it. And again, because most people are just followers, you just follow along. You know? Well, I mean, it's it's a matter of acting in your own self interest. The only problem is when you get into that position and things, you know, become excessively easy or facilitated for you the opportunity cost for doing certain things that you wouldn't have done before is much lower so you're like oh well mm -hmm. you know I, I maybe i could do that maybe i could take advantage of some people maybe i could you know twist it around for to my personal my personal gain as opposed to you know the movement and often it doesn't it even start that it's, way it's a, it's a human characteristic that's why people should not have a unwieldy authority like the state does that's why a small yep. group of Men and women the market should decide. should not have <laughs> a territorial monopoly. The market should decide. You know, like uh, let's just take uh, uh, any content creator, for example. If people are if they're putting out content that people like and they're on message or whatnot, or they, they build their audience by staying on a certain message and then they shift, their audience is going to leave them or, or part of their audience is going to leave them and whatnot. It's still the market is is wide open as far as who you listen to uh we're, we're not in north korea you know well not yet this is true, this is true. <laughs> if hillary would have won and just just hear me out uh, i, I think we would have been closer i don't know i think that. it's gonna happen inevitably you know i've already settled this i just think they're gonna try the soft touch with trump well the soft touch. but what do you think the past hundred plus years has been that's what it's been it's been it's been quote unquote well, soft just, fascism for over a hundred years. You know when like you get in a car and you don't know where the clutch lets out or something, or you don't know where that gas really just gives it. You know, <laughs> it's one of those. Things. They're gonna hiccup. They're gonna press it. Just, whoops! Here we yeah, go. Yeah, they, they 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 hiccuped a little here bit we are. with uh, with Obama. <laughs> Oops, went too far. Well, no, but that that happens too. That's I mean that's just the nature of of because well, they could have let McCain yep. run and do do all of the same shit he that Obama did and called it different things and everybody would have been like yay yay well no it it it, it depends on the i mean the, the, i i think i really believe they try to play the uh you know just the the winds of change and just try to go with who they think can get away with more because that's and all sweep as much under with them well yeah as, because that's all it really is it's yeah. it's 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 a constant push push cuz you know Gov governments always grow they never shrink so what what is what how did how does that happen by constantly pushing the envelope by constantly throwing i mean there are things that are like pretty much documented that are essentially i think that the name of it, they're called milker bills which they yeah. you know which they which which politicians purposely write up to scare certain industries into doing things that they want or agreeing with what they want or lobbying for what they want um, with no intention of ever having the bill passed, it's just to scare people, and they do this stuff all the time. So they're actually, going. It's like they're, a mafia uh, Yellow, Hammer, Yellow Hammer News actually, uh, for it's a it's a news outlet on Facebook for stuff happening in Alabama. Uh, there was actually something exactly like that, just like what what you were talking about, Jeremy. Where they're uh, uh, I can't remember who it was. It was some moron from wherever in the House uh, presented a bill for the state legislature that. Uh, would install a filter on every cell phone sold in the state that would prevent you from looking at pornography. And you'd have to pay the state $20 in order to get it taken off. Any cell phone. 
any cell phone in the state. I don't even know how <laughs> you would do that, but yeah, it's 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 out there. It's a bill. It's getting co sponsors. Yeah. Oh no. And that's exactly its purpose. I I think it is. Although to be fair, it's like most everybody who's seen this has just like laughed. Well, there and, are and just looked at it and just laughed at it. But well, there are there are some people like there are very religious Congress Congress members and senators, both federally and state, that. Would will that I've seen plenty of times put up bills like that for you know moral purposes or whatever, but it could very well be some kind of milker situation or or even just a distraction technique or what was that one recently that everybody got on I uh, got on this woman's case from some uh, some I guess it was a Democrat from Texas who came up with a with a bill about it it was a satirical bill. But it was it was basically to strike back, or, you know, her way of striking back with you know, the government always trying to get in a woman's vagina. That whole deal, that whole ridiculous oh yeah, okay, I, I think I know what you're talking about. But I don't remember what the bill. Yeah, was, I can't but, remember yeah, offhand I, I what it, I can't remember what it was either. But I but everybody was like coming down on her, saying, oh, "Look at this idiot and this thing is putting out." Like even though ev- pretty much everything I read on it said like she was fully aware that of what she was doing and it was meant to be satirical. But people are so just trained to jump on that stuff and just attack her for it. But stuff course, like this happens. But, makes- but yeah. stuff like this happens all the time. Satirical bills, um, pissing matches between Congress. I've seen congressmen oh, and senators yeah. where they yeah. do bills back and forth just to agitate each other. You know, like this is yeah. what goes on at these levels. It's insane. And they're all alcoholics. Every one of them. I don't know about every one of them, but it, I'm well, sure maybe not every one of them. them. Okay, okay. I would say ninety percent of them are raving alcoholics. Ninety percent. I would be if I was a congressman. I would. No, they. I mean, think about what they do. They just day sit day around all day with lobbyists and stuff. Well, no, yeah. they just sit like, around with lobbyists all day. If I was a congressman, day. I would be. I would be drunk the entire time I was on the floor. Like I would never spend a single day sober while I was in office. <laughs> not one. Vote for like, Andre. Not, not a single one. I would be just sober enough to drive myself there, and then I would commence to Dri- continue drive to yourself until you, I was. Why you got to drive yourself? Just got to drive her, man. You're a no, congressman. No, no bullshit. No, 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 no. Because I got to take it to the extreme, man. Because I'm. A, it's it's in the Constitution. It says I cannot be stopped and charged with a crime if I'm on my way to discharge my duties. So those, D, <laughs> those DUI laws, they don't fucking apply. I got this. All right, Andre. Andre, Andre, 2018. Let's look for you. Uh, let's, let's, let's get you on the. It. Let's get you let's on the ballot. It. Let's somewhere have the in drunkest Alabama. man possible in Congress. This will be I spectacular. Will I may. I may actually try to help with this. this, this I will this sacrifice will my liver for the people. Wow. Of the state of Alabama. That is a, that is a level of commitment, folks. So you're gonna try to. You're gonna try to. You got to do this. You got to get your law degree. And then you got to be a state senator. And then you got to go for governor or like high up in the governor and then you make your well your, no if you get your senate run if you get if, if if you're getting your law degree you could just skip all that stuff and become a judge and you could become a drunk judge that might be even more Ooh. entertaining right i know but no laws, yeah but there's no laws protecting judges driving drunk oh there you go but True. congressmen True. congressmen and there's women. cops protecting oh, man, ju- there's... judges that drive drunk. you're not writing a judge a ticket unless he kills someone well, yeah, well, but I don't want to take that risk. I don't want to take that risk. Yeah. I just want to point to like where the point to the Constitution. Be like, there it is, black and white. <laughs> now you can either let you me go, can't or I can stop have me. your ass. Pick one. Nice. <laughs> right, well. This well, is taking a dark, dark turn. I'm well, sorry. it's no, it's quite alright. Yeah, I, I, I rather enjoyed it. I was gonna say on that, <laughs> on that note, we're we're coming close to an hour anyway, so we probably should wrap up. So that's perfect. So yes, Andre, 2018. Let's get it done. Let's do it. All right. Let's make it happen. Uh, all right. Well, this has been a fun conversation, guys. Uh, anybody have anything before we close out? Uh, I love being on this show. Just, I just want to put that out there. Thank you guys for having me on this show, and thank you for your continuing support of my habit podcasting with you guys. <laughs> well, because we, this is my pathology. Well, uh, we l- we love you being on. Andre, exactly. And, man. Uh, I was gonna say that we love all of our Patreon donors that are donating enough to uh, help us. Uh, Break a little bit over, even. Yes, not much. Yes, but, and, yes. Thank you, um, all of you. And please look. Yeah, look you soon. Really we're, help, uh, we're we're actually going to have a Patreon up. For me. There's there's actually going to be a Patreon episode up soon. We haven't put anything up in a while, so we really appreciate the people that keep. Uh, yeah, we probably donating. should do stuff to drive that. Well, up. no, like I said, I I just recorded an episode last night. It's about an hour and a half. I have to finish editing it up, but uh, that'll be up there soon. Uh, so hour and a half that's three patreon episodes it's buddy. one patreon episode and i don't think we have any limits set so <laughs> anybody who donate i think it's anybody who donates to us can can view it at, there's nothing there's no because i know some of the other people who do patrons get get enough 
get get enough donations that they can set levels where it's like you have to donate five dollars a month to be able to access. Nah, nah, nah. As long as you donate anything to us, I don't give a crap. You can access it. Um, so yes, gratitude gratitude does not come in degrees. Exactly. Thank you. thank you for all of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. So, all right. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at the world's most horrible website, theseedsofliberty.com. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Well, that's not going to happen. Will never happen. (laughs) Totally will happen. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.